do you favor municipal broadband internet? Yes, I do. I'm 100% backing municipal broadband. I'm against uh, the current moves against net neutrality. So yes, I'm very much for that. We need, uh, I saw your video actually, so I'm pandering a little bit here, but I saw your video about uh, municipal broadband in Pasadena. It's great what you're doing down there, but uh, there's a lot of things I think we can do on the municipal level, municipal banking, I think we can do on the municipal level. And there's movements in California to do that as well. Gail McLaughlin is backing that as well. So I think there's a lot of things we can do on the, on the local level to avoid problems that we're having on the federal level. So yes, I, I do back that and a lot of other efforts in municipal areas. Well, do you have any insight? And, and you know, if, if you don't, that's okay. Because I, I mean, I think we're all still watching it unfold. But our net neutrality bill here in California, which it's a great thing that we have one. However, that bill is flawed uh, and very susceptible to lawsuits from the FCC. Do you have any insight to that? Um, I consider that bill a great idea and one that probably is not going to do anything for us long term. So a lot of legislators will pass bills that don't actually like in the long term don't actually help us, but it is an election year. So I think that there's a lot of that going on. I applaud the the efforts of people to fight against net neutrality, but at the same time, a little cynical being a legislative analyst for over six years now, I'm a little cynical that those bills will actually get through. And if they do, that they won't be torn apart in court as soon as they pass. So, I mean, there's, there's probably lawsuits waiting for these bills to pass already where they're just waiting for the actual date that it gets chaptered. Yeah, I mean, and there's lawsuits on all sides, too. The, the way I like to look at it, it's just one of those things. It's like the house caught on fire and the house is very susceptible to fire. We might be able to put the, the fire out for a little bit, but uh, we still need to build this fireproof house, which is municipal broadband nationwide. And somebody's got to be the Debbie Downer to say, hey, guys, it's great we put out this fire for now or we delayed the fire at least, but we still have to build this new house. I'm sorry. We just have to do it so that this doesn't catch on fire again. And uh, I'm okay with being that Debbie Downer because that's how important I, I view the free and open internet. It is totally essential uh, to yeah. our lives. So um, it, it goes back, let me just, just real quick, uh, it goes back to the incrementalist vers versus uh, bold strategies uh, tactic. So if you're an incrementalist and you make a little baby step and you're satisfied with that, that's a problem. So I'm against incrementalism. I think we need to go all the way, like for a single payer healthcare. We need to go all the way. We don't need a public option that's then going to fail and it's going to be used as a counter argument against single payer. We need to go single payer. So like broadband, we need to get municipal broadband to protect us. In the meantime, the incrementalists will will have a rah rah rally around the bill that probably isn't going to really help us in the long term. But the problem is, it's not only an incrementalist policy. Then they're satisfied or satiated by that one small step. And then they stop fighting. So like I tell people, when I when or if I get into the US Senate, will I vote for incrementalist bills? Yes. Will I be satisfied the next day? No. So that's the difference here. So so I will be moving those bills forward that I see going forward that are a good thing. I'm kind of split on the public option bill. Like I mentioned, I think that public option will be used as a counter argument against single payer because public option, public option will fail because there's no money to back it. We need everyone in a system. To actually back it financially. So uh, I don't know if I would pass that one. I, I might put that one forward depending on the specific language. But and at the end of the day, if we can pass progressive steps and steps like Bernie does with his amendments to other people's bills going forward, then yes, I will pass those bills. I will, you know, I'll, I'll vote yes on those bills. But at the same time, the next day, I'm going to be out there, you know, promoting single payer or promoting whatever topic it may be to the next step. So it's that satiation that some legislators have once they make that little tiny baby step that's the issue with me yeah uh, no absolutely and, and the whole thing with the uh the public option it's like we already had the quote-unquote baby step the quote-unquote baby step was romney care or you know obamacare which is how it was sold to us uh that was our baby step which compared to the horrible system we had was a you know a baby step in a slightly better direction now you need to go the full throttle and get single payer. I knew Obama wasn't going to do it, which is why I didn't support him in the OA primary. I was a Dennis Kucinich guy. Uh, but you, you can't have another baby step. So I yeah. mean, anyone that makes the argument for incrementalism, there, like, you had your baby step. You had your baby yeah. step. 30 million people are still uninsured. But the people that did benefit from this baby step 
realize how important healthcare is, and now they're listening to the idea of universal healthcare, uh, which is what we need. I actually let people know that Obamacare was actually a subsidization of uh, private healthcare industry. So, so the private healthcare industry is actually making a killing off that because it broadened the base of patients that have to pay into the insurance system while still being a private system, while still not capping costs. On the other thing, the baby step was actually in San Francisco for the public option, and that actually fell apart. So we, we have actually an example of public option failing that the, the opponents will use against single payer in San Francisco. So Gavin Newsom, he came out for SB 562 before he was against it, and now he's for it again because he got some pressure put on him. But basically the second time he said, oh yeah, I want a system like San Francisco's. No, we do not want a multi-payer system. We want a single payer system. Hey guys, thanks for watching. That was a clip from Get Your News On with Ron, the world's first viewer curated streaming news show. What does that mean? That means I log on to a stream and people tweet me articles over on Twitter at Ron Placone or they use our Reddit subsection, which is just Get Your News On with Ron over on Reddit. And that's how we build the show. I'm seeing all these articles for the first time. We are literally getting our news on together. Follow me on Twitter at Ron Placone so you can participate. And this show streams live every Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So please do tune in. If you want to support this show, you can do so over on patreon.com slash romplacone, where for as low as a dollar a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts every week, exclusive videos, free tickets to shows when I'm performing in your town, and more for as low as a dollar a month. Please do consider it. Thank you so much for your support. This has been Get Your News On with Ron.